Hey guys, Shadow Strider here, and in this video I will walk you through my solo fight against Stormclaw. I will advise you on what gear to use for the fight to make it easier for you, I will talk about his abilities, how to deal with them, mention any bugs, give you tips and tricks, as well as share my overall opinion on the encounter and my strategy for killing him. Please remember to thumbs up this video if you have liked it, found it useful or you have learned something from it. Comment on it if you want to say hi, give me a friendly advice, tell me what I can improve in future videos or give out any other sort of feedback. Share it as you see fit and do not forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Twitch for more Dauntless content. If you are only interested in Stormclaw's abilities, you can check my Stormclaw abilities guide in the description down below or by clicking the card link in the upper right corner of this video. As mentioned in my Helion and Pangar videos, you can either go for Stormclaw after Pangar or after Helion, the choice is all yours. Stormclaw is an easy behemoth, but if you want to kill him even faster, then first kill Helion and get his weapon. Stormclaw is a shock behemoth who has a weakness towards place, and that is the reason why I suggest doing Helion first. Stormclaw also is one of the easiest behemoths in the game as long as you pay attention to the fight. He has his model based on Embermain and shares some abilities with him. He is faster and easier to kill than Embermain and is not so annoying as his Fury counterpart because he does not have that much of a charging involved into the encounter. The gear I suggest to use against Stormclaw is either Nizaga gear or Dras gear because they give you some resistance against shock damage. For the weapon of choice as mentioned before, you should use a blaze weapon from either Helion, Embermain or Charak. The choice is yours, just try to have enough damage to kill him. Regarding on what type of weapon, any is good as the other for this behemoth. You have plenty of time to attack with both slow and fast weapons, and his pylons are even easier to destroy than Nizaga's. Now, you can use a Nizaga weapon also, it might deal less damage than the other ones, but it will still shock stagger him and leave him wide open for attacks, the choice is all yours. In this fight, I used the full base Nizaga gear together with the Helion weapon. Now, for those of you that are wondering why I'm not using tier 3 items, it is because Nizaga is a progression before Stormclaw, so I found it normal to use his gear rather than Drask's gear. Now, regarding his abilities, as mentioned earlier, you can check my Stormclaw abilities guide in the links down below for a full in-depth explanation alongside videos of the abilities and how to evade them, but I, I will briefly mention all of his abilities and quick tips about them. Stormclaw does have a bite attack which looks a little bit like Drask's front bite and the Gnasher. It is easy to see when he will do this and evade it since he takes quite some time to do it, and if you stay near his legs or tail, he will never cast this ability. Similar to Embermane, he has a headbutt ability which you can simply sprint out of or roll towards his back legs to evade. He does a stomp ability which is probably the easiest one in the game to notice and evade, since it has a small hit radius around his front legs. You only need to stay near his back legs and you are as safe as it gets. His electric spin is similar to the spin that Emberman does and like him, the attack only hits when the tail passes through you, so you can move away from him with a roll or roll in the direction he's spinning to evade the tail. Also, it should be noted that once you destroy his tail, this ability will not hit you no matter what you do. I have tested this and if it is a bug, then the developer should fix it. If it is intended to be this way, I find it strange because they could have just made him unable to do the ability once his tail is destroyed. Stormclaw also has a lightning ball ability which is similar to the ones that Nizaga shoots from his pylons, the difference being that he does them from the front of his mouth and you can easily evade or send them back towards him. What I have noticed is that slow weapons, the hammer and the axe, send the balls back faster and they cause a stagger to the behemoth for a very short time, while the other weapons can send them back but not stagger him. The ability you most have to watch out for is his electric fence which he creates by jumping around and putting down pylons. You can however destroy them fast because they only take from 2 to 4 hits depending on the weapon to be destroyed. His final ability is Lightning Cloud. He will cause a cloud of storm to appear above your head and after 3 small flashes of lightning it will hit you with a damaging one. It is now easier to evade this because you can do it simply with sprinting or with a roll when you see the final flash. That's about it regarding his abilities, about his enrage and eater mode there are some things to be mentioned. Firstly, he enters eater mode each time he casts lightning cloud and I have not yet been able to define when he goes out of it, but you can tell that he's in eater mode 
from the lightnings and sparkles around his body. Also, he will get a new ability, which is like a front claw swipe. Before he does this, he will turn into pure electricity, so it's easy to predict when to roll and to evade. When he's not in Ether mode, he does this ability without turning into lightning, and it's a mix between an Ember Main Charge and a Claw Swipe. When he does this ability, you can easily boop him with your weapon of choice. Finally, he should have an Enrage mode, but I have never noticed it. According to the wiki, his eyes should turn bright red, but as mentioned, I have never noticed him becoming like that. I presume it is either bugged or not yet implemented, and if I'm wrong, then please someone correct me and I'll be update the information here. My strategy for Stromclaw is to go for destroying his tail first, then his head. Afterwards, just stick near to his legs and the whole fight will go smoothly. Even if he does an electric fence, all you have to do is destroy one pylon and move out of it, or if you desire, you can destroy the whole fence down, but I find it a waste of time because you can take Stromclaw down between 7 and 12 minutes easily. There's nothing special regarding beating him, just stick close and he will only do 2 to 3 abilities and rarely the lightning cloud and charge. As you can see in the video, I killed him with all parts of his body destroyed and looted. You can destroy his head, 2 front legs, 2 back legs and tail. You can destroy his second horn on the head for an additional small stagger. All parts will drop Stormclaw height, the head has a chance to drop a magnitude, the front legs have a chance to drop a static height and a rare chance to drop a vault scale, the rear legs have a chance to drop a static shank and a rare chance to drop a vault hoof, the tail has a chance to drop a capsa tail and a rare chance to drop a charge tail. The weapons crafted from Stromcall all centered around perfect dodging. The sword, axe, warpike and chain blades all give you 200% meter gain for your next attack following a perfect dodge while the hammer reloads 4 ammo shots after a perfect blast dodge. The helmet and leggings from Stormclaw give you energized stat bonus, while the chest and gloves give you aetheric frenzy stat bonus. Energized stat gives you increased weapon charge rate with 5% at 1 point and 30% at 6 points. Aetheric frenzy increases your lantern charge on hit with plus 1 at 1 point and plus 10 at 6 points. As of the moment this video was recorded, Stormclaw does not have a lantern added yet, but should one appear, I will update the information regarding it. Stormclaw's gear is a little bit better than Nizaga's and gives more armor rating, so I suggest you craft all of his armor after you kill him because you will need it when you go into tier 5. Also, his armor is useful against Karabakh, who is the behemoth you will be going against next and the final one in tier 4. This is everything regarding Stormclaw and his encounter. I hope that everyone has an easy and fast battle with him and I also hope you enjoy the rest of my fight against him. Remember to check out my Stormclaw abilities guide video which is in the description down below, as well as my other behemoth soul and abilities videos on my channel. Thumbs up this video if you have liked it, found it useful or it helped you in some way. Comment on it if you want to say hi, give me a friendly advice, tell me what I did wrong or give out any other form of criticism or feedback. Share it as you see fit. And lastly, do not forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Twitch for more Dauntless content.